What's going on everyone? So today we're going to look at Vladdy Guerrero Jr. here. He's working off of a machine, using a mini glove, working on uh, backhands, these kind of in-between hops, creating the short hop. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different things today. Uh, this is pre-game, and so we're going to go over uh, the importance of, of having routines and the work that goes in, especially at the high levels, the major league level. Uh, we're going to talk about tra using a training glove. We're going to talk about the mechanics of backhand play. We're going to talk about the importance of creating a short hop when you get this kind of in-between hop and how to do that. So there's a lot of things that we can take from this video and talk about. Let's start off with talking about this. Um, routines are hugely important. There's a reason why players at the major leagues are, are so good. You've seen it. There's a lot of videos that go around of Ron Washington with the Braves and how much work he does with his infielders. To, to be a great player, to play at the major league level, and even players that you might say, oh, they're not, you know, they're not great defenders at the major league level. The amount of work that goes in to be able um, to make yourself a major league player and a major league defender and someone that can play every day um, is, is a ton of work. And if you're a player that is obviously not at that level, most, most players are not at that level, um, Routines like this, right, that, that may seem simple, these things are done almost every single day. And a lot of times what I notice with youth players is they think that, that, um, that this is, you know, for, for little kids, right? This isn't something that they need to do. I always talk about, I play with five different professional organizations, and we all did these routines. Every organization I was with, was with did these routines every single day. Right? This is where you build in the fundamentals. Right? This is how you make the routine plays look routine. This is how, when you get this in-between hop, you make this play like it's, like it's nothing because you've done thousands and thousands and thousands of reps. And a lot of times younger players think that they're just going to get into a game and just magically do it. Or they think taking five to ten reps in practice is, is going to do it. Now you need thousands of reps. Right? So that's the first thing. The importance of having a routine, and you might not have a pitching machine that can shoot a ball at you like this, but you can find a wall. You can have a, a, a tennis ball and a wall, right? That can be your best friend as an infielder, and you can get yourself tons of these reps, or you can just grab a, a buddy or someone to throw the ball to you. So find time before practice, after practice to, to do this. Uh, it's hugely important. These are huge reps, and you can get so many reps um, instead of just waiting for only at your team practice when you have a coach that has a bat that can hit you a ball. If that's the only time you're going to get work in, you're not going to get enough reps to be a great defender. That's the first thing. Uh, second thing, let's talk about some mechanics real quick. So if you notice when he's about to field this ball, here's a couple of things. Now, one, he's on a knee, okay? So what this does, and, and even if you were standing up, I want you to think about a few things here. First off, Look at his posture. Now, again, I know that he's on a knee, but he's over, excuse me, he's, his chest is over, right? So many young players I see, their chest is vertical when they want to feel the backhand ball. When your chest gets vertical, your head gets way up here. Your eyes get far away from the ball. I want my eyes to feel like they're as behind the glove as possible. The only way I do that is I get my chest over and I get low. I need to bend my knees. Now, again, he's on a knee, so this kind of sets him up in that position. So you can go from a knee and feel what it feels like to get my eyes behind the glove, get behind the ball, get my chest over, get as low as possible. The closer, again, I can get my eyes to the ball, the more times the ball is going to go into my glove. So that's, that's the first really, really important thing. And you can do this drill again from a knee, and then you can stand up and try to get yourself low by bending your knees, getting your, your back flat, as flat as possible, getting your eyes behind the ball. Uh, second thing, he's working because of this position, he's working from the ground up. This is one of the biggest problems I see with backhand play, especially, is that players will have their glove way up here. And then as the ball comes, they jab down at the ball. They stab at the ball, creating hard hands, right? I want to work below the ball. I want to be under the ball. We always say from the ground up. The ball is going to bounce, right? So the ball is going to bounce, and now it's going to bounce up. I don't want the ball bouncing up and me working down at it. I'm working with the hop. So the ball is bouncing up, and I'm working from under the ball, and I'm working up and through the ball as well, right? So I always want to get my glove on the ground below the ball, work below the ball, work from the ground up. Really, really important. 
Another huge tip is to open the glove early. Right? We talk about having no late flashes. We talk about glove presentation. This position right here, the glove is already open to the ball and the ball is not there yet. That might sound simple, but this position rarely happens when I watch backhand play at youth baseball. The glove is closed, the glove is high, the glove is not open to the ball early. We have to present the glove to the ball early, earlier than you expect, right? Much earlier than you expect. Right, so now my glove is already open and now I can just work through the ball, okay? Now, let's talk about working through the ball. So right here, we have a slight bend in the elbow. And as the ball comes, we're going to extend with our elbow. So our elbow basically works as a hinge. So it's bent, it's extended. Bent, extended. Right? So it's not a huge movement. But we're going again from bent to extended. And we're cutting down the distance. We're shrinking the distance. And this is the important part. This ball right here, where it's bouncing right there. If we don't work through the ball, right? I get this question all the time. You know, my, one coach told me I should work through the ball. The other coach told me I should funnel the ball to the middle of my body. What do I do? Do I work positive? Do I work negative? I'm not sure. When the ball is going to be an in-between hop. Right, so a short hop would be if this ball was going to bounce right before his glove. A long hop would be if it was going to bounce outside the frame of the, of the video. The in-between hop is, is right in between those two spots. So if I just kept my glove here, right, if Vlad just kept his glove there, that ball would bounce here and it would bounce up and it would catch him kind of in between. It'd be a really difficult hop to grab. And so what you do is you shrink the distance between ball and glove. And that's why we work through the ball. We work positive through the ball on an in-between hop. Now, if we're working a normal ground ball and we're not on a knee, we're gonna also work our footwork to try to close that distance too. But in this case, we don't, we're on a knee, right? So we're just gonna try to close that distance with our glove. And so that is why he's working positive. He's trying to shrink the distance, right? I wanna create the short hop. That's what I'm trying to do, create the short hop. Every time. Create the short hop. That's why it's positive. Now, if this ball bounced a lot further away and was a long hop, you wouldn't work positive to it. You would just catch the ball, bring the ball to the center of your body, transfer and throw. So notice again, back is flat, eyes behind the glove. Glove is on the ground, working from the ground up. Glove is presented early. And now we work positively. I call it pinching through the ball. We're working positive to create that short hop. So we turn the in-between hop into a short hop. We don't want there to be distance between the ball and the glove. We want to have that distance be as small as possible. And then he's using a training glove just to be more precise. Now he's going to eventually put on his first baseman's mitt, and it's going to feel easy. right? So it's train small, miss small. We talk about that a lot with... Um, we talk about when we're playing catch, we say, hey, we're going to aim small so we miss small, right? So this whole aim small, miss small, or train small, train with small gloves so we have very small misses. And now we put on our big glove, and it's really, really easy um, when we go to our normal glove. So hopefully these things help you out. Again, routines, routines, routines. Routines are so important. Don't just think you can get into the game and make the play. Don't just think you can take 10 ground balls in practice and make the play. That's the biggest difference I noticed when I became a professional baseball player is the amount of reps you get on defense. Because on, when you get to the major leagues, you really can't make errors. Now, obviously, everyone makes errors. But if you just think you're just going to make lots of errors and play at the major league level, it doesn't happen. And so... The amount of work that goes into defense at the, at the professional level was crazy. It's one of the biggest things that stood out to me. Now, you're a professional player, so you have a lot more time. But you are taking tons of reps, right? You, I mean, you, you cannot make many errors at the major leagues or you go to the bench and then you go down to the minors, right? And so you've got to be able to play defense unless you are just the, you know, the greatest hitter in the world. A lot of people say, well, if you hit, you won't sit. Maybe when you're young, but not in the major leagues, not hitting or excuse me, the whole hit. If you hit, you won't sit thing. If you want to do that in the major leagues, you have to be the best hitter in the world. <laughs> like you have to be Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Or, or David Ortiz. So 
I'm not sure how many players out there are David Ortiz or Vladdy Guerrero Jr., but the the if you hit, you won't sit. That that stops after after a while. Again, unless you just plan on being the greatest hitter in the world. If if you do, congratulations, that's great. Um, but but it's not that easy to be one of the greatest hitters in the world. Anyways, hopefully this gives you some tips and helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions. Put in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. All that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's gonna travel about 90 feet in a half a second. I catch when my left foot lands. I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again. It's about fielding the ball properly every single time. If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait to field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in an infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.